Welcome, everybody, to the June 12, 2017, regularly scheduled Midland Public School Board of Education meeting. If at this time everyone could turn off their cell phones, um, the cell phones will interfere with our feed. Hopefully, we have new, so who knows, right? So, and at this time, if everyone would stand and join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Scott, if you can do roll. The kids really want Yes. All right, I think they turned it down. President Bradstaff. Here. Vice President Singer. Here. Treasurer Prezi. Here. Member Baker. Here. Member Blake. Here. Member Fridell. Here. All right, thank you very much. Moving into item two, which is our consent agenda. Item 2.1 is approval of the regular meeting minutes from our May 15, 2017 board meeting and also the revised special board of education meeting minutes from our special board meeting on May 5th. And Angela, I want to address the uh, special board meeting minutes okay. for a minute. Okay, thank you. So after that special board meeting, um, we had a meeting with Brad and we realized that we had um, re an error in the minutes, so that's why you're doing the revised minutes okay. today. Um, in that meeting, um, it was brought up that um, Brad was still con still um, a no voter or, or had some issue with the, the furniture because there was some background in the furniture that wasn't included in the packet. Okay. Both Bob Cooper and I were not uh, picking up on that or okay. aware of that until we met later. Okay. Um, and so we, um, Bob chased down the, the, the detail, which was the individual prices of the furniture, which since mm -hmm. You get, I sent to all of you. FFO right. had seen it, the rest of you hadn't, right. and so I, I had sent that to you and I did check on that. And so um, there was an error in there and I okay. think that clear clarifies a whole bunch of the questions that Brad had in that meeting for, the, for him. It came from French, um, which mm -hmm. is not the normal procedure, so French right. designs, hands off the Barton Mallow and then they bid it out and Barton Bar Bar Mallow was with the bidding and the process coming in. Now furniture never really went through Barton Mallow, it, okay. it was French. And Susan Carlson just hadn't okay. done that before, and we didn't see the detail. We had the detail, but we right. didn't know it wasn't attached when she gave it to Cindy for the for the board okay. meeting. So All right. it wasn't there, and so it should be should be good going forward. All right, thank you for the clarification. All right, item two point two: the following persons are recommended for employment for the 2017-18 school year. Two point three: are teachers attaining tenure status? Can I go back 2.2 on you? Yes, you may. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to introduce him la later, but um, so so you can hold still for a minute. But um, Janet Greif um, is not here tonight because she has her last board meeting in Bay City, and so she needs to complete that as well. But we do have Matt Wenzel in the audience with us. I see Matt in the back. And of course, you know Margaret, and so we have Margaret in the room as well. And we have Melissa Toner in the room as well, which we'll all do under administrative appointees in a little while as well. All right. Thank you. Thanks. All right, so 2.3, teachers attaining tenure status. 2.4, are tenured teachers who have requested a leave of absence for the 2017-18 school year. 2.5, are the following staff members who have announced their resignation with those effective dates noted. 2.6, is approval of the payment of the school system's bills for the month of April. And 2.7 are legal invoices for payment. And Mary brought a question <coughs> up on there's a different one there for you that kind of falls under that category where you normally see our uh, law firms. There's one there for Dearborn Public Schools. Mm -hmm. And so that's the equity uh, caucus that we belong to, the 32 mm -hmm. Old Harmless Districts, most of our Oakland County. And Dearborn just happens to be the uh, treasurer for the organization this year. So. All right, thank you. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. I move we adopt consent agenda items 2.1 through 2.7 as listed. Okay. Support. All right. Moved by Scott, supported by Mary. At this time, is there any discussion? Oh, I'm very excited to see Janet Greif coming back to us from Bay City. I think that's a great move on our part and uh, excited for the future there. Excited for Matthew Wenzel at uh, Midland High as well. All right. Thank you. Any other discussion? 
do we have to adopt the matrix that was presented to us, or is that just a plan moving forward as your work in progress? The, the uh, no, that's just the plan that we're yeah. presenting to you. Okay. Yes, yeah, the reorg of the right, right, central office administration. All right, all right. At this time, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. All right. The consent agenda passes. All right, moving into agenda item three, Board of Education Matters. 3.1, I think, do I turn it over to you sure. to begin with? All I'm right, just Central turn it Park right over. So Central Park, is, we're working on some parts of Central Park, and Shannon and Bridget and many of the students are here tonight to present to you. So I will turn it over to them. Hello, yes, it's working. Um, hi, I'm Shannon Blazy. I am one of the co-principals for Central Park Elementary. Uh, I have to get used to saying that, it's, um, it's new. Um, tonight we have a few presentations for you. We're going to share um, our new logo and our new mascot, as well as our new Central Park Elementary School song. And um, um, just to give you a little background, Mrs. Hockemeyer, uh, the other co-principal, um, the two of us went into the Dow High commercial art class and worked with Mr. Gladhill's art students and gave them some background on what kind of school um, we are going to become. And they created from that language um, some, um, some representations that we ended up choosing for our logo and our mascot. And today I've got um, the creators. I have Anna Hale who created the logo. And I've got Gwen Cook who created the mascot. And they are going to give us a little more background on their designs. So when I first heard that we were designing for the elementary school, I was really excited. And I started thinking about how I could show in a single logo kind of the different aspects of the elementary school because I really loved the idea of the explorers and that being the mascot. Um, so I wanted to incorporate something with that for sure. But then also of this being a STEM school and having the focus on science, technology, math. Um, so I kind of, I really like the image of a compass rose and that connection with the idea of the explorers. Um, so I ended up doing this compass rose with the outside being a gear to <coughs> emphasize that there's the, ex the explorers and it's a STEM school. And uh, the font choice also, I wanted to pick something that would echo the round shapes, the circular shapes in the compass rose and the orange circle. So the shapes in the font are really rounded and a pr more professional look. Um, so, thank you. Looks great. Thank you. It looks ah, fabulous. Very nice. <coughs> oh. Okay, so when I thought about the elementary school, I wanted to create something timeless and also that invoked, you know, a child and exploration and something that was very, um, you know, good for this time period. So, of course, space is massive and we're still finding out so much more information daily on it. And so I thought of an astronaut being very relatable to today and the future, um, which is why I picked that. But I also wanted to create something that was recognizable instantly for both kids and adults alike. And so then the astronaut is also holding the flag with the logo on it to connect the two together. Very nice. Thank you. Nice. So the next part of our presentation is our new school song. And we have to thank um, Mrs. Barbara Jacques and also Kelsey Williams for um, helping our students learn our school song and teaching the principals the school song as well, <laughs> and some parents. And so um, could I have our singers come on out to the front, please? Do they get extra credit for coming to a board meeting? <laughs> 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 Do you want to maybe reach them so parents can see them? Yeah. Some pictures? Yeah. Not a bad idea. Then you can take the screen up? They put the screen up and put them in front of Yeah, where is the camera that can... They probably want to make sure it's on TV, too. So. <laughs> 
parents did have, we had a free session with it. job all of you thank you so much and you all look so sharp all dressed up are you all excited for next year excellent 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 it's hot out that's great are you guys excited for next year yeah. do you go by the new school yeah. excellent good all right. Well, thank you all for coming tonight. Barbara, I think it's wonderful the the words that you chose for this song. I hear the explore new adventure and wonder will it inspire us and fertile ground and um, it just pegs what we're trying to do with the school. So thank you for for your words. Oh my absolute pleasure. And I would like to present you with this. We knew after we had a logo and a mascot that every school needs a, a song. And um, Barbara and I have worked together for many years at Plymouth, and she's also the music teacher at Carpenter. So when we approached her, just knowing um, the talent that she has, I'm just so thankful. And she brings such joy to the music program. And I just want to note that Barbara is, Barbara is retiring, and so this will be her, her last adventure with us, and we're so thankful. So thank you, Mrs. Jacques. Thank you, boys and girls. You can find your parents. Parents, thank you for bringing them. We appreciate it. Oh, that love it. Why they're uh, getting situated out there. School's about 97, 98% complete if you've had a chance to go by. Mm -hmm. I was a little bit surprised today, even the parking lots are going in and being paved. So it, and we passed inspection. We can go in if, you know, at okay. any point in time. And now the students are going to uh, go through on Wednesday and Thursday. Oh, are so they? Two schools are meeting there, I think by grade levels. Okay. And taking the kids uh, through. So cool. if you want to see something neat on Wednesday and Thursday, oh, yeah, ask Cindy for the times. And uh, <laughs> it might be kind of fun to go see those reactions as they go through her. Oh, that's great. That's, that's, that's Thursday? Yes. Okay. Wednesday and Thursday. Wednesday and Thursday. All right. Can uh, I ask a question on the, the creators of the mascot and the logo? Are those, I take it those are students of the Midland Public yeah. Schools? Is They're that Dow correct? High, Dow High students. Graphic art? Okay. Graphic yeah. arts? Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Arts class. yes. Mm -hmm. If you remember, well, you may not, a few years ago when we did our new Midland Public Schools mm -hmm. logo, we also had, I'm assuming it was the same class. It was. And they um, came up with the same type of things okay. that we were looking through. So. That was fun. Yes. It's very, fun. very creative students who it's come kind of up with process. those. It's, right. Yeah. You, you, you think, oh, that, that doesn't sound too tough. And then you look at 14 different logos and mascots and you realize, oh, this is pretty tough to figure out what what really right. uh, tells the story that you want to tell. And it's, it's cool because they, they learn those presentation skills just like if, uh, being in a business. And, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. They, they had great presentation skills during the FPS logo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really good right. 
I loved how the, the gear and the compass rose was already worked into the mascot as well and the flag and yeah, the thought great. that goes behind it's pretty neat. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. yeah, even when she was talking about the font and why she chose the font yeah. she chose. Mm -hmm. When I like the fact that it's students, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. from oh yes, from start to finish on that. So, mm -hmm. all right, moving on to 3.2, which is our June shining stars. And our first shining star is Dave McDonald. Dave, would you like to join me here? I'll read a little bit about you, Dave, as you come up. Dave started in the district with GRBS, which was our cleaning company at the time, and moved to EnviroClean in January of 2015. In December of 2015, he began a new assignment at East Lawn. Mr. McDonald now serves in the first shift temporary building manager position at East Lawn, where he does an outstanding job. When you see him around, you can see him involved. He is how much he cares about the students, staff, and school. Our office received several Shining Star nominations for Dave. Among their comments, his nominators wrote, Dave is an essential part of East Lawn family. Not only does he keep the building clean and running, he is also very helpful to any staff, student, and visitor he encounters. Dave was a great sport when he wore the eagle mascot costume and braided down <laughs> oh, school to give oh, out Oh, now we know who's children. wearing the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Dave is always available and willing to help out in any way he can. It'd be an explorer outfit going yeah. for us. <laughs> he takes care of problems right away, is great with kids, and has a great sense of humor. He helps our days run smoothly and has really stepped up to fill his position. Dave is awesome. He is not only our schools, not only keeps our schools clean and organized, he always has a smile on his face and can do positive attitude. He is a kind of staff and students, always willing to step in and assist whenever and however needed. We are so blessed to have Mr. McDonald be East Lawn. Congratulations, Dave. Oh, oh, congratulations, thank you. You lost a piece of candy. Yeah. <laughs> congratulations, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, that's part of your family. <laughs> Get from Brad. <laughs> Our second shining star, star is Lynn Reduso. Lynn, come up and join me. Lynn earned her Bachelor of Arts degree from Saginaw Valley State University in 1981 and a Master of Arts from Saginaw Valley in December of 1990. Lynn began her MPS career in 1989 as a .5 kindergarten teacher at Longview Elementary School. In 1991, she moved to Woodcrest to take a full-time kindergarten teaching position. In 2006, Lynn moved to first grade at Woodcrest, assignment which she continues today. Lynn was nominated for the Shining Star by an MPS parent. Among their comments were the following. Lynn is an excellent example of MPS Shining Star. She has been a blessing to our daughter this year, and as a parent, we couldn't be happier. She, she has a true passion for all children. She is always looking at every child, trying to stretch and challenge them in positive ways. Her bubbly, friendly, loving, encouraging personality is exactly what the kids need to see day in and day out in the classroom. No child is ever left or behind as she has multiple eyes, ears, and hands. <laughs> She's truly a gem and a phenomenal at what she does. She deserves special recognition. Congratulations, Lynn. Not a real three point three. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping it was something else fun, but what's not fun about the budget? <laughs> Should have had someone stay in company. Yes. Yeah. All right. Three point three. So presentation of the 2017-18 general operating budget. Well, a little technical difficulty here. We'll let the audience clear and get it up and running. Huh? All right.
<laughs> there it is. Oh. All right. Well, good evening. <clears throat> Just kind of to give you, uh, as you know, one of the uh, requirements of the state of uh, Michigan is a law to adopt a balanced budget by July 1st. Um, so what I've got here is just the timeline we've been on. It's a very typical timeline for you, but the uh, board workshop um, begins back in April where we went through some of the general ideas for the budget, where we thought we might be going with the state and with our own uh, local. And then where we're at tonight is the proposed 17-18 uh, budget, which I'm about to show you the board and the public hearing that you will hold right afterwards. And then you will come back, as it says up here, um, to take board action on the 26th. You'll adopt the 17-18 budget. Then you'll also approve the final 16-17 budget adjustment, which will vary again when they do the audit. But as you know, we have to start one budget before the other one's finished. And so there's a lot of estimations as you go there, especially for a district our size. There's a, a lot of money still out there. And while we work on it, we still get people that will say they're going to spend something that they don't quite spend, which is a good thing. But um, so the numbers come in. So that's kind of where we're heading. I always like to remind everybody that unlike budgets, when people think of them at home or in a business, it's not advisory when you're talking about a public school budget. It is really just an accounting of both the source and how we're using public funds. And so that's why we do adjustments to match what's going on as we go over time. So it gives us some guidelines, absolutely. But it's, uh, as a public entity, we're really showing the public how we use the money that's given to us through various um, one of the most important things that we do in this uh, budget meeting, or the first budget, is we talk about the millage rates. And we establish those. And you know, later in our board packet, we have to establish those with the city of Midland because they issue a summer tax, and they need to know how much to issue that. Um, pretty standard millage rates here. You, you, the first one is 18 mils on the non-homestead. That's the standard one voted about two or three years ago. Now it's good for 10 years. It's the most that you can levy. It's, it's basically what every district in the state does on that. Homestead. The second one is the hold harmless millage. It's calculated every year. So this year it works out to be 1.7100. Um, it's up slightly, about 0 0.0286 uh, six actually to be exactly on. Um, the way that's calculated is way back when, when they first gave us a uh, hold harmless district, they established the amount of money that you could raise per student. It's uh, $415.31. Back then, it took five mils, actually more than five mils, to raise that amount of money. Uh, so over time, you can never raise any more. So depending on where the taxable value is and how many students we have, that's going to change this millage year after year after year. Well, since neither of those are exact sciences when we're setting it right now, they also allow the following year for you to adjust it. If you levy too high one year, you got to take it down the next. If you didn't levy enough, you take it up. Typically, that's what happens. Uh, in this case, maybe we had a few more students than we thought. The other thing that we're starting to notice is we're getting bigger adjustments because the other part that's in there is the uh, personal property tax exemption. You lose that. Now, it's made up through the state, but you have to put that into your calculations of where the millage rate should go. I wish I could tell you that's a simple process, but you got to get all that information from the county. And then on top of it, especially in a district like Midland, we have to go back and they have to subtract out Renaissance zones, IFTs, all. We offer a lot of things out there that, as far as the district, um, even at the county level, it's really tough to figure out in time for this meeting. So what you can do is they give you the number. You know how much personal property tax that you're losing. And we put that in there. But then the following year, we're going to have to adjust for those things that came in and out. So we're seeing slightly bigger adjustments as we go. It doesn't affect anything. We're following the rules. It's just we're just seeing bigger adjustments either way because of the personal property tax. Uh, the other part is for our bond. And if you remember when we started, I know I'll get this one, 2.92 was the very first one. Last year was 288, and now we're down to 272. We arrive at that by sending all our information in to our bond advisor, financial advisor, which uh, uh, is now with PFM. It used to be started by the same people. We talk to execs and people at this different company. And they look at all our taxable value, where it's going, et cetera, and set that. The reason it's going down, a lot of people think it's in terms of taxable value going up. In actuality, it's. Um, Taxable value, and when they first start, they project the bond out over time. Really, they knew personal property tax was coming out of our taxable value back in 2015, and they just predicted it would drop our taxable value by bigger increments when they first started. 
So I think the first year they thought we were going to drop by 13% tax and value, and the county only dropped by 8. And so this, this I think last year they were predicting 4 for this year, and it's down by 1. So yeah, it does mean some of the real property is going up a little bit, um, but it just means that it's hard to predict to bond out 15, 20, 25 years. And so we send it every year, um, right in uh, mid-May, and it goes back pretty quickly, and they tell us what we should be levying to do that. We don't want to over-levy. We want to get in that situation. Of course, you don't want to under-levy. So that's where we stand today. State funding is interesting this year because unlike the previous years that I've done this, uh, the state aid budget is not settled. Some years it's not quite been settled, but we knew where they were going. Um, the proposed the closure of the MIPSERS the retirement system to new teachers, if you've read anything about that, appeared to be, I'm going to say appeared to be, a stumbling block between the governor and legislature. Um, actually, within, and I mentioned the last part there in the last five days, it appears that both the budget and the MIPSERS ideas coming to a compromise someplace. So literally, while they worked on the compromise for the retirement system, which is, um, in essence, right now, there's a pension system, there's a hybrid pension system for any new teachers since 2010, where it's partially a pension, it's partially an investment, like in a 403B or 401K, et cetera. Um, what the legislature's proposing on one side is that everybody gets closed out, you go to 401K plans, that's all you get. The governor's not so sure that's the way it should go, kind of believes in the hybrid plan, thinks it will pay off in the long run and it'll be there fast. It's a difference of opinion and they both have uh, people on both sides with numbers. Some of their own fiscal agencies will say, you just extended this longer, you've got some big money because you have to then uh, pay up the system, if you will, so it's solvent it because now you get no one else coming to the pension system to support those that are in the pension system. So they've debated about what's the right thing to do. Here's they're heading towards a compromise, um, maybe one that encourages more people to go to the 401k retirement and less of the pension, but the pension would still be there. Uh, but that part's not been determined, and nor in some ways does that affect us. It affected us because that held up the budget. But they also sat down at the same time and started to uh, head towards, you know, some kind of, uh, I don't want to call it a compromise, but agreement on where we should be with the budget. So the main difference, if you remember back when I did this in April, was basically are we going to get 50? 2x formula, 50 and 100 for districts, was it going to be 100 for everybody, which was the House version, and then there was the Senate version, which was like $88 and $166, and they were going to take some of the retirement funds that they give the district away, which wouldn't have been good for us. And the other question was, how much of the 31A at-risk money would we get? Okay, so those are the parts. So it's not finalized, but we do have some agreement. So when you look at the budget and you look at the revenue side, I'll start there. Here are the assumptions that we did in putting together the budget. Um, it seems clear to us that the 2x formula is going to be in there. And it appears that it will be $60 per student. Okay? That brings us up to a foundation allowance, if you will, of $8,411. Because the other thing they did is it appears they're going to leave in. You have to remember a year ago, uh, they had to put a little extra money in, in a lot of the old harmless districts because, uh, because of inflation. We weren't going to get any kind of an increase a year ago. So they put in an extra $50, I think it was $51, um, for each of those districts. They left that in the foundation. That's a good thing, because they could have pulled that back out, mm -hmm. given it 60, taken away 51, and we wouldn't be very far ahead. So right now it looks like they're going to be there. The latest projections for 31A money is about $525,000 that we're getting. Now, you're not going to see it in your original budget, because this is a, an expense that's have to equal revenue. And um, to put it in this, right now I'd be putting in a line of revenue for it, and I'd just be putting in an expense line that really didn't mean anything to you. Um, the expenses, um, and, and Brian will work on that, Mike will work on that, I guess we all will. Uh, there are some things that could help us on the general fund side, and not going to say a fortune, but there are also some things that will help us meet uh, some of the requirements, coming, like in literacy, uh, with literacy coaches, so there are some things that we won't have to spend general fund money on. But we'll bring that at adjustment time, we'll keep you informed as we go, but it really didn't make any sense to put that in there now when we don't know how it's going to be spent. And to be honest, um, you know, that, that's one thing that could be fluid enough, that it could change enough. And as you remember, it ranged from 1.7 million, I think, on the proposals to 100,000. So somewhere in between, but I don't think we should put that in the budget to worry about it just at this point in time. Because again, equal expenses to the revenue that go together. You can carry some money over, so don't worry. Uh, we don't get it, the state delays on us a little bit, we'll still have that money, it's just when we can use that. 
And the other thing that they're all pretty clear on is we're going to maintain the MIPSERS cost offsets. Um, they're not going to take anything out of that. It appears going to be there. And I don't know, if, I know I've explained it numerous times, but just again, the retirement system is being supported with state payment that comes to us, and then we turn around and give it right back to them. And it does two things. It puts a cap on top of it, and then they're kind of paying down a little bit of the difference. So the 147A pays down some of it. 147C puts a cap on it. Um, I think the 147C is using that touchable. They kind of know they're going to keep doing that. Uh, but the 147A, that's always like that little carrot that holds up. If they don't fund that, that's always going to mean more dollars out of the district's pockets. Support. So we're capped right now. I think it's 25. It's coming years like 25.96 is the highest we would pay for anybody. Without it, you'd be in the you know, 37, 38, depending on, on, on who would win and which part they are. There's seven or eight different ways we can do that. Some of the assumptions for MPS then um, we're projecting from our consultants and everything that we know and enrollment drop about 63 students. Um, it's a good thing if I'm wrong on that to the high side. In other words. You, you, it wouldn't hurt your feelings if I come back next year and say we have the same number of students in the district. Hmm. That's a very good thing. And it is one of the fastest ways to turn our district around financially. No question. Um, we're talking about a blended count of 7629. Um, we do know, and I just listed a few of the grants that are coming out of there, so you know why the revenue is dropping just a little bit. The number of students will be the biggest back down it. Um, reductions in federal programs, 325,000, as you've heard, the title funds and what's going on with the federal government. Those are fluctuating, and it looks like the state's saying we're going to get less than both. And the initial allowed to show that. You'll also see a reduction on the expense side, too, because we don't take in federal dollars, it doesn't go out on the other side. Um, we always, too, with ESA and special education, how much it's costing, it's, it's varying. And this coming year, it looks like we would receive about $161,000 less than we had in the past. Uh, the TRIG technology grants are the ones that have been there, especially as the state turned over to uh, statewide testing. Computers. Uh, there was quite a bit of money out there, and it's, it's going away now, so we spent the last of it. Um, it's helped a tremendous amount. One of the ways we are getting more money through the ESA is the IDA flow through money. We, for a long time, have provided parochial services. It's not the same as what we provided if it came to MPS, but we will mainly in the area of speech, but it can be any special education services. Um, we provide those services because those parochial schools are in our school district. Um, we were kind of got looking here, not myself, Lori Holderby's here too, before I forget to. A lot of people going to make it a budget. Uh, not me just sitting there and doing that. Lori does the, all the legwork. Uh, the business people and everybody that we have to go to to get budget numbers from. It's kind of important that they all pull together here. But Lori and I started looking at this going, we think we should be getting some money from the ESA. We're not sure why we're doing this. And either why they're not doing it or why not, we're not getting any money for it. Not a private that way. So we've been working with them. and. Uh, they are flowing through money. It's federal money. It's meant to serve the parochials. It's a proportionate share question that they're getting an equal amount. And so we're just going to finally get paid for those services. It doesn't reimburse us directly. That's not what we're asking for. There was a proportionate share that should come through. Looks like going forward we'll retain that just because we have the capacity. And we approached the ESA about them taking it over. There are little parts that they would have a hard time filling. Best for us to keep managing like we have and just have them blow the money through to us. So the income uh, will never fully cover everything you do, but it's better than we've been for a while. So I wanted to show you the enrollment because you often want to see the trends because when we talk about it, it's such a big factor in what we do. And so as you look at this one, this just kind of shows you the breakdown uh, 15, 16 through 17, 18 estimates. And the other thing I'd point out to you. We typically, I typically leave 8, 9 up there because that's the last year of 20J money. So we had quite a few students. We were getting uh, 290 some dollars more per student each time. Um, that was the kind of the heyday of times. And when it went away, it kind of gives you where to compare it to. But just so you know, you can see how the elementary versus secondary versus special ed uh, breakdown goes. And of course, don't forget, we get total numbers, but then it has to be blended over time. Remember, they measure 10% from February before and 90%. You get partials. You a whole bunch that goes into counting people around here. But just so you can see, uh, it's kind of interesting. The elementary appears to have stabilized or if not grown a little bit. That could be part of stuff we're doing, bond, et cetera, and programming. And uh, as we knew, that bubble of birth has to kind of go down at the secondary level. And you're just seeing it's not dramatic because we get feed ins from other programs, parochial, for example, that end in eighth grade. So we're just getting some of those concessions. Just to give you an idea. 
if you really want to see a trend line, I think that's the one that shows it. And I think I put that in the board package too. But it's really been over that last little bit there, as you look at it, that we've. Uh, I think 13, 14 was when I was here at Mike and Talibi. Because that was when <laughs> that last line that kind of went way down. We lost like 150 more students, uh, I think, than Lynn had projected at the time. And since that time, it's flattened itself out considerably. And that's made a difference on where we stand at. Um, you could put a birth rate in Midland County on there, and uh, it, it, it would match you know, pretty perfectly the same shape of the curve on that graph. It's just there's, there's less kids out there, and there's more competition for those kids, but there's just less to grab. Um, that's the one thing when we've worked with the consultant, feels that we're just grabbing, if you take the birth rate, just say, what percent are you getting in kindergarten? It's gone up now. It's, I'm not telling you it's like 10 percent up. It's more like 3 or 4 percent up from what we were. So it might have been down around 59. It's a, it's a good thing, but it's just, you know. Uh, this is how the per pupil foundation allowance goes. I would just tell you it will fluctuate depending on how much the local brings in. You see that 41531 from the whole harmless right across. <coughs> Can't change that. This is all per pupil, by the way. The local millage will depend on the taxable value of the non homestead. Okay? So if it goes up and you see the percentage go up, then the state aid payment's gonna go down because there's only so much to get there. That's why we always tell people too, if the whole harmless millage would ever vote it down, uh, that's our problem. The state doesn't make that up. That's the one thing that is above the they would match the other ones. And it just varies over time. In fact, you can see there back in 8-9 that that 20J payment that uh, Governor Granholm had taken away was uh, $293 a student. So you get some idea of where we were. So general fund, we're looking at 79,000, 79 million. Um, and uh, so 79 million, $128,914. To get the chance to see where those funds are coming from, pretty consistent with uh, budgets you've seen in the past as for where the breakdown is coming from, state versus local, etc. And I guess the only other thing I would say there is that it's down about nine hundred thousand, roughly nine fifty, from where it was th uh, this year from the uh, March budget just, which is the last time that we created the budget. Um, so that's where we stand right there. Okay, the expenditure side. Um, we keep using our balance our budget. It seems to be working. It's the process of maintaining uh, building and department expenditures close to the level they were at for 16 17. Actually, close to the level they were at 15 16. Actually, close to the level they were at 14 15. Since we started this, it's more of a process. It, it's just our terminology for process of you come in and tell us not what you had last year, but <laughs> what do you need and what do you need for this year. Um, you know, it doesn't make us the favorite people at that time of year. Um, but it is a good question. It has helped us maintain the supply side of our, of our um, budget. Uh, we are ending some of our employee concessions from the past two years. You remember uh, people that have been on the board for a while. We did ask for concessionary packages from all our employee groups, and that's coming to an end. So we do have some payments of one-time budget surplus production stipends. So the states, the steps have been reinstated, and whenever the steps come back in, no fault of anybody. There's just a lot of people there waiting to step, and so that makes a difference in how much money we have going out at that point in time. Um, as you know, as part of this, I'm pretty pleased with the fact that you know, we actually have every employee group uh, settled. Um, we got it done way early this time. Um, we did approximately 1% salary increase for employees. It kind of went along with the reduced uh, budget surplus protection <coughs> stipend. That was part of the deal. We do have an increase in medical premiums of 8%. Um, remember, we lost some of the runoff costs, too, so it's kind of a little bit of a trade-off. Um, we are decreasing, not this year, but it will happen in January, um, the district's funding of the health savings accounts. Um, you know, we raised uh, the, uh, the individual's uh, contribution to their health savings account. In other words, um, the deductibles are like 100 to 200 less than we funded a year ago. We know we have to go there because no matter what you do, if the health keeps increasing, we have to find ways to keep under for our employees say too, the hard cap. Because the state does limit how high we can spend. So it's important to find affordable health plans that are good for our employees, but don't violate it. Because once you go over it, people are on the hook for the full amount of whatever you go over. So it's important we find plans to work. There's a reduction in that federal programming, matches the revenues. And then staffing patterns, it's kind of a process. I couldn't explain it to you totally at times, but we're always looking at evaluating and 
It can be the time of year. It can be that year. It can be at the end of the year where we sit there and say, okay, what did we just do? Is that good, bad, and different? So we always try to analyze, I guess is the best way I can say it. Sometimes it doesn't mean a reduction of staff deaths. Sometimes it doesn't mean addition of staff deaths. It's absolutely true. It's kind of both. But just looking at it from the standpoint of let's analyze it. Let's see what makes sense. Let's see what's good for our kids. And we kind of work from there. But it does make a difference. Um, these are the proposed uh, expenditure changes. These are the major categories that you would get there. So it shouldn't be a surprise, the salary category. And again, the first column there is the March. So that was the March budget adjustment that you approved. It's the latest 16, 17 budget I have. And then there's the one we're going to propose for 17, 18, and right at the top, second column over. And what you see there is salaries are up about uh, 600,000. You put the 1% in there, some of the other things we did. That's kind of where I'd expect it. You might wonder why the benefits are down, just shy of a million, if you remember. And that benefits category would be the early retirement incentive, which was in our budget this year, about 900,000. So that's what happened. The benefits really just kind of remain stable. Um, but when that comes out of it, there's going to be a drop in that part of it. Purchase services um, and contracted services, about the same. Uh, you know, those are anything that we purchase from somebody that's not on our payroll. So picture everything we have to hire out to do. Contractor services a little more on the repair and maintenance size, but they're all the same general category. Uh, I would guess the majority of those two are due to BioClean. The contract was up a little bit. Couldn't be all of it. It could be everything from um, we might have, and I know we did. We chopped down more trees because of the uh, ash, or that all of a sudden we were we were doing quite a few there to, to be safe. So that was there. Um, supplies and materials, remember what I said? It's pretty much uh, staying the same down a little bit there. Could be various reasons there. Um, I think on the, the capital outlay, a little bit of seeing the bonds effect there. There's less to take out of the general fund. Not that we still don't, because, for example, this summer, you know, we're doing, um, for example, bathrooms. And so it had to come from someplace. And so that would be our capital fund. But you're starting to see some of the bond effect of there's another source to take care of some of those capital outlay. Uh, leases, uh, kind of an impressive amount, but that's the copier lease. So the copier lease finally goes away. We're going to buy them through the bond now because that takes at least was there every year over and over again. That really helps offset some of the increases that we had this year. And the transfers, uh, again, are just various things where the money's going into the system. So, again, you'll see that our, our expenditures are down about 776000 So, the general fund, and again, this is by account um, at $78 million. Um, like I said, down about 776000 you can see where everything goes. I think the key thing, and this doesn't change much, we're uh, a personnel heavy uh, field uh, business. And you'll see, if you look at it pretty closely, somewhere between 85 and 86% of our uh, um, expenditures are typically on personnel of some kind. Um, you'll see the other there, the 14.5, that hasn't changed much. Uh, maybe a little higher when you have a little older staff, but it's sometimes more experienced staff. But um, it sticks right around there, so it's pretty close to being the same. Another way to look at that exact same thing, so I try to give you a couple. This one's by function. Sometimes I know you guys are interested in just a different look and say, okay, so where's where's the money going? So you can look up here and see, okay, 65% class instruction, student support, instructional support. Um, you can see the other or the administration, how much it is. Support services tend to be like the financial business office, tech people, uh, those things. So you can see where they go, maintenance, transportation, athletics. Uh, but just a different look at where the expenditures go. And, you see the list of expenditures. and one of the things you got in the board packet was kind of like a, a chart, if you will, that kind of showed you the different categories and the different functions. So you could see where the different amount of money is going. But it's just two ways to look at it. And then, of course, you're always interested in the, the bottom line. So when we propose the budget, where are we going? Um, again, that's in the first column. That's the March budget. So what you're looking at is that 16-17 adjusted budget. Uh, not our final ones, so whenever we start talking fund balance, I got a question. You won't know the exact fund balance until I see that last audited number, so we know exactly what it is. So this is a guess where you think it will be. But when you look at this, then you'll see where the revenues were at the different times. Now, again, if you look at it, you can see the two numbers I talked about on the revenues and expenditures. Uh, in both cases, we expect, and I know it had been a while last year, you hadn't seen it for a while, but we expect ex excess as revenues. In other words, we certainly are staying within what we're taking in within that year and not having to touch fund balance. Um, there is a category called budget variance. Uh, that can either go up or down. 
Um, and it could be either like an increase in revenue or a decrease in expenditures or increase in expenditures. I mean, there's variance takes all over. One percent. I think I've told you many times historically it runs two to three percent. It's more close to two in the last few years as money's gotten tighter. But we budget one to be conservative. I don't want anyone thinking, you know, we're not trying to, if it's, when it's there at the end, we'll show it to you. But this is what we try to budget for. So you can see the surplus, if you will, and the money that we'll be able to put in the fund balance uh, is about 1.6, 1.7 million there. Um, so again, you get excess revenue. You'll have some variance that will go in. Um, what I put there is the unrestricted fund balance. There's fund balance. That's everything that's above and beyond, right? Um, within fund balance, there is what we call inventory and prepaid items. Money's gone. You can't spend it, but it's part of fund balance. So if someone gives you just the fund balance number, that's in there. The other thing that's in there is anything that was, I'll call it gifts or restricted money. Restricted money has a purpose. You can only use it for that purpose. So what I tried to show you this time was the unrestricted. Sometimes when you look at the budget document, you also see spendable. That's another term you see, spendable fund balance. Well, the spendable includes all the gift money because you can spend it. You just can't spend it on anything you want to. So just throwing that out there. So unrestricted wise, looks uh, if our projections come in, Somewhere around 11.8 to 11.9 uh, uh, million. Uh, and you can see, because the curious part is always the percent of expenditures. Now, as we do that, and it's always debatable, and we always talk to people about how much should you have in your, your fund balance. Um, and it's always, you know, depends who you are, what you think is the right number. Uh, almost every one of our employee groups, I can't think of one that hasn't, have all agreed to look at next year, not actually the year after, 1819. Uh, any kind of raise is going to be based on how much we have in fund balance. So uh, I think Mike has presented to those groups and, and myself when we've talked to them that we would like a fund balance somewhere between this 13 and uh, 15 or 16. And you know, when people ask me, do you really need that, I would just always tell people that when you look at it, maybe I can show you by uh, jump to a trend there. If you look at this, just so you can see a trend and the reason it's important, you know, if you look there, there's a lot of years that little blue line is not as high as the orange one, except for the last three. All those times you were, and it's okay. That's why you put together a fund balance so that you can allocate when you need to. But that's what got you through. So before my time in this position, you use that funds balance to make it through. I don't know if there's a magic number either. And if you go around, it's around the state, it's different in every community. I'm just telling you that that, that got you through, uh, as you look at it, there's a good five years up there where you had to use it. There's a couple years, like 10, 11, you might say, oh, we were okay then. That was a big influx, one-time payment kind of thing. Yeah, we made it, but didn't know we were going to. And even as late as uh, 15, 16, um, excuse me, 14, 15 would be the first time, we thought we were going to dip in further than we did. And in 15, 16, we ended up being to the good, but much bigger to the good than we thought. So I just wanted to show you that. Uh, another way you might look at it is, is kind of over trends. And so I would just say, as you look at that, again, you'll see that we were really taking her down pretty low there. And percentage-wise, we're working our way up. That's true fund balance there. That's not unrestricted one. So both graphs are just showing you how much we have in fund balance. So as you look at that, um, what I would just tell you is it's a, it's been a savior as we've looked at things. And it's helped us make it through to that point. And, and so as you look ahead, I'm not going to tell you you're not ever going to dip into that because you're not going to build that to 50% and say, oh, this is great. But you, you got to have some, some money there for lots of different reasons. I look at the budget and see that we're still making good progress. We've had, um, I said it earlier, not just the people that put together the budget, but all our employees to this time have worked really hard um, and helped us by the concessions they've made, um, hard work they do. Uh, it's not just the process, but it's, it's getting there. So I always look at that as kind of a total team effort. So that's the budget. I certainly would answer any questions for you. You know, you have to follow with the public hearing and the budget. But all right, so at this time, we'll move into um, item 3.4, which is a public hearing of the 2017-18 general operating budget. So do I have questions for Bob, comments? I guess one thing, um, Bob, you talked about the taxes, and we're at 2.72. Now that's split, right, for summer taxes? Yes, for we the do one folks. point. If in the city of In the city. city. That would be split. The okay. county only uh, assesses once in the winter, so that doesn't get split. So, yeah, it'd be one point, uh, in fact, summer tax resolution coming up here, we'll say 1.36, we'll split that. Hold harmless gets split too, but we try not to do that equally because it's like 
playing with fire that's we typically take like 0.9 and then we follow up with whatever the remainder is it's too tough to predict because sometimes if i can get a better read like we suddenly know we have more students in august before september i can adjust a little bit more maybe a little closer but we've been pretty accurate here okay and then with the 31a that um if we do get the 525,000, then we'll probably see changes in the school improvement plan and different things we'll, we'll be able to invest differently yeah and i would caution you too far on that you know brian and i will differ just a little here and so i'm a little more cautious and conservative brian's very excited about that money where you can close the achievement gap and some of the things he can do there and <laughs> i'm still not sold that bob's correct on the 525,000. that's why he put did not put a figure in there right, right. um i think there's some still some things going on in lansing that makes me very cautious of that and so i hear the other way i also know that there's many new things tie barred to that language so at one time at risk money um, when I was in the previous district, um, was pretty much I could use it wherever I chose. That's not the case. If you look how the new language is tied to the third grade reading legislation, to the math legislation, and some improvement goals, some restrictions. And so um, I think some of the things that Brian and the principals have talked about may not meet these guidelines, but we'll wait and see where the proof of pudding is once it's officially approved. That part, Brian would agree on. Well, I'm excited that there's a, a chance that we'll get that money and, and yeah. I think it'll it'll make a huge difference for yeah. that. Let me go population. back a little bit just about that at-risk fund. So that payment I talked about earlier to the Equity Caucus, they have worked very hard on that. But also, um, since I've been here, I've raised probably a little bit of cane with our two local representatives about at-risk kids and at-risk kids. And I give Gary Glenn credit. He, he has gone into Lansing and been out advocate on that that you know minimum public schools may have less at risk kids but they still have at risk kids and that money should fall at risk and so they the present language will only allows us to capture a portion of that bob knows his numbers better than me so a typical district that's not one of the 32 districts will get a 500 700 and we and we are under the new language so we got our foot in but under the new language we would get 30 30 percent 30 percent only 30 percent so we get 30 cents on a dollar compared to every other district who right. gets a dollar so we're making progress i guess the other uh thing that i noticed was with the idea idea flow through um services through the esa and the sixty six thousand dollars that we're getting this year and haven't gotten from years so lori a big thank you yes. for for helping us uh uncover that and um <coughs> It's a, I, I would love to have the definition of flow through when for 20 years we haven't seen the flow through. So um, I'm, I'm glad to see that 66,000 coming through. Yeah, in all honesty, the proportion of shares we got into it, and indeed, Lori would agree, it, it's, it, you have federal regulations and you have state regulations. And in some cases, it's not clear which one was. So I think part of it was this conflict of the two areas and nobody really knowing who in this country wants it. It starts with who even is the local education agency. In some cases in the state, the ISD can act as that. In other cases, it's us all the way. But yeah. I think that's where some of that difficulty came from. But I will give Lori, Lori, Bob, Mary Lowers a ton of credit on that one, that they dug deal, so deep and they went to MDA and got a definition of that LEA, which hence may give us the ability to go to the ESA and say <coughs> is not right. And that is 66,000 multiplied by many years mm -hmm. potentially. So that's a big, big time. Absolutely. Um, I was excited, of course, with the uh, employee groups set all settling and then the 1% raises. And then I, I sure hope we can we can hit the 15% fund, uh, general fund balance because that would even, that'd be a 1% raise for next year and that would be, um, great for the employee groups as well. There, there come it. Very I, I, yeah, <laughs> I think I it looks like you're I just wanted to say thank you um, to Lori and Bob and anybody else who was involved. The graphs, the charts, um, it made it understandable to me for my first time through. Um, so I appreciate that. And I would like to comment that after the years, it's so nice to see the fund balance increasing after so many years of watching it decrease. And we needed to use it for very important reasons, but 
it's just kind of refreshing to see that. Um, I think it's time and, and that our uh, budget is looking good. Healthy. And healthy, yep, so that we can share that, hopefully, with, with our employees. So thank you for all your hard work, everyone. <coughs> Anyone else? I guess I feel it's just fiscally responsible when you have 15% fund balance to be able to give raises and talk about raises, but uh, when, when you don't have that healthy fund balance, it, it makes it a real hard, uh, a hard sell and you put your district at risk. So um, I'm just pleased with that, that budget. Brent, did you have something? Yeah, I was just you curious. Like of, <laughs> I was waiting. For yes. All the tables are great. I just on Appendix D, we have the ratio of students per certified staff and students per teacher, and then we have students per administrator. And there was some moves in the students per administrator, and I was just curious if there's a target that we were going after to that is a rule of thumb that we should think, be in. Yeah, you know, I think the reason you see that, of course, in a graph guy, I know it's the right question. Um, one of the things is we took the administrator pretty low, so it's kind of a false. Um, if you will, the number, so the graph jumped up, the number of students per administrator jumped up because we took the number of administrators. So, uh, kind of when we talked about adjusted staff, at the end of that year, you know, it's like when you get one of those moments, you go, I think we pushed that one a little too far. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, a actually people in the building, too. So, you're getting feedback going, oh, you cut that tight enough that made this hard. And so, it's really been us getting back to where I want to tell you. Bob's being politically correct, Brad. <laughs> I, I, by nature, I'm very aggressive, and I came in and I did that first two months on the job where Linda walked in and said we were 80 students missing, and I had to find 800,000 and already a declining budget. Bob's not kidding. I wondered what I had done, and so I that next year I went extremely aggressive. And Mary was still in high school. She knows what I did to the high schools and what I did to places. And as that budget began to recover. I self-reflected and say, where can we do that? And we added some back, but we didn't add it the same. And so, I, you know, I, I feel like we're a changing organization. And so, those who want the, we look like exactly what we once were, um, we're not going to look exactly what once were. we're. We're a different population, a different organization. And so, we went to the principals to say we we're going to give some FTE back. Decide how you're going to use that FTE, but it's not going to be exactly the same. Then central office, you know, I. I um, Many U.S. board members tried to talk me out of it. We didn't fill Gary Verlini's position, um, and I certainly, and I'll give credit to Brian and Bob in this because I was supposed to be equally sharing in the extra duties and pains, but they're very good at protecting me, and they took the bulk of that work on. And um, you know, when I see my two colleagues here at six in the morning and seven at night, and, um, and, and what we're doing, is we're too thin. And so again, as we recover, it's a chance to reflect and move back. The teacher ratio of the student it is, I don't know how to say this one nicely. I honestly believe there was times that, um, I'll say it this way. So um, when I lived poor as a young man, I knew I didn't waste money. Today that I make a little more, I probably at times waste some money because I have it. Our district at times had the luxury of, of spending money and more than money than they should have probably and so I watch staffing closer than probably anybody has had and sometimes that's comfortable for people but we run staffing tighter and closer but again when you look at our class size numbers they're not um, accessible it really even maybe increased across the board but we no longer have a class we used to see often in our in our <coughs> classes particularly secondary level or maybe we ran a 15 student section and then we ran a 32. Where now it's more we're moving to that 20 to, to you know, maybe 30 range. And so the, the average is still the same, but we've increased the bottom if that makes sense. And so we're just tightening the organization. So yeah, you're seeing that in that graph. I think multiple, like most things, Brad, multiple reasons. Yeah, there's not a lot of fluctuation in the student's purse. Yeah. It, that one's consistent all the way back to 2003. Yes, and, and we've kept it there, mm -hmm. down there. Yeah. If you look back to 2003, that's going to be the days we had 60 administrators. Mm -hmm. So that was so little, we're not anywhere near that. Uh, half that, that would be Yeah, that table's pretty empty over yeah. there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, I just had one more. I was going to say, that's, yep, go ahead. Um, so, is this reflective of what we did 20 minutes ago? We hired another administrator. Is that in here? 
Is it in? Yes. Oh. Yes. Janet yes. Be there. Because this is the yeah. budget moving forward. So yeah. this is next year's budget. So, so like all the budgets that we do, uh, not again, not knowing exactly where things will end up, we have that some assumption. So the assumption is okay. The, this administrative appointment's going to happen, so we put it in the budget. It's just like anything else, we get down the road and something doesn't happen. That's why we have adjustments to reflect what we're doing. So it's it's in there. We tried to have a contingency. It's interesting. We're, I think the last city of yeah, Marquesian told me 20 new hires. That sound right, Mike? Yeah. Okay. And so we got to project their salaries. Uh, we tend to be conservative, meaning uh, we put a lot of them. Uh, you know, yeah, we know we're going to get one ones as we call them, category one, step ones. But there are categories you're not going to find anybody in that. So we try to err on the side of the higher salary, so it's built in there, so you don't have to worry about. Oh boy, we had to get this person. Is that going to same with the benefits side? Yeah. Does that make sense to you? We put them in like full family, just because you know if they come in as a single, and many one ones will. That's okay. If we are, if we high, have that money, but it's yet. close. We are high. You've seen enough of these budgets. We air high on an adopted budget. Mm -hmm. Don't ever want to come to you and say we built the budget too small. Right. We'd rather do it the other way around. Well, and I think that that's one of the things I wanted to point out that I've still been impressed with year after year is that we still have this budget variance that we come out with. And I know a few years ago when things were really not looking well and we were really tightening, the question was, okay, can we still assume that we're going to have the same type of budget variances? We still yeah. seem to have as credit to everybody in the district. And you're on a nice tight variance meeting, uh, math and science people. It's you know, it's in the same range every year, right? And it's a reasonable range, and you don't have the highs and the, and the lows, which is, is a good way to be. You can kind of almost predict what your variance mm -hmm. can be, um, you know. And so Bob, Bob's always cautious, but he'll tell you, you know, it ranges two to three, and right. it's a nice variance. Um, Lori and I've seen many districts that are just consistently higher than that, and that almost is like um, maybe not lack of work of putting in and tightening that. But that budget adjust, the first one you do of the year is also the tightening of that to get that variance to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. my, my statement often to when we're in administrative meetings is they'll say, but I give you money back. And I said, that's the variance. I got to have it. Yeah, you no, know, mm -hmm. that's, we expect the variance. You know, if right, we, right. we're not going to get that, that's a different way to budget. Then. You know, the, the, the goal is not to spend every cent that you get. Mm -hmm. you have enough to do what you want to, and if you don't spend it, we want it back. Um, and then it goes to fund balance or to fund something else in some other area. And that happens at times where that as we're finishing accounts up at the end of the year, you, you need to, and it's something that's not avoidable, but we have some variants over here that we can use over there. Right, excellent. Yes, and the fund balance also, like other people have commented, is trending upward, but I once again, as I say every year, cautiously optimistic because we all know it was only two years ago, I think, that we sat here in June thinking we were going to have to budget in September because the key thing in September is that we don't get a state aid payment. So we need to have that fund balance just to bridge that gap. Yep. So, all right, are there other comments? Got to open up to public. Is there anyone in the public who would like to speak, comment? Anyone? <laughs> They're racing up. All right. All right. Well, thank you. All right. At this time, we will move into item four, which is Board of Education Matters presentations to the board for action. And the first thing we have, 4.1, is administrative appointments. Yeah. As Brad mentioned, we have some of these tonight. <laughs> Most of them are one-to-one -one replacements. Um, mm -hmm. One's a di different change in title, but it's a one-to-one -one replacement going forward. So the first one we have tonight is Matt Wenzel. And Matt, you're free to come up and speak if you want to say anything. I'll give you a little bit about Matt's background. Matt is coming to us. Uh, he's president of the principal of McGregor Elementary in Bay City. He has served in uh, administrative roles since 2011, and he's done it at all three levels, high school, middle school, and elementary levels. Brett, um, Matt has a bachelor's from Saginaw Valley State University and a master's degree from Saginaw Valley State University. You're going to hear a lot of Saginaw Valley tonight. Mm -hmm. by the way. So <laughs> Saginaw Valley ought to be proud tonight. So. Four is yours, Brett. Thank uh, Matt. you. Um, first, good evening. And I'd like to take this moment to thank Superintendent Sharo of the Board of Education and Mr. Jester for this wonderful opportunity. 
Um, I'd also like to thank my family uh, for their continued support. And with your permission, if I could introduce them Absolutely. quickly. Yeah. Um, so all the way over to my right is my wife, Katie. Next to her is my daughter, Abby. My daughter, Madeline. My daughter, Kendall. The boys are going to have to stand up. <laughs> That's my youngest son in the blonde hair, that's Nathaniel, and then uh, Matthew. Welcome. Welcome. Thanks for coming to support your dad. Very excited. Nice uh, shirt. And your husband. I said dad, but husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like their excitement, I'm very excited to join the uh, Midland High team over there and uh, look forward to the 2017-18 school year um, and all the successes that we're going to have. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome. 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 And I like your tie, too. Yeah, I noticed right away. <laughs> Our next point to you, you may know, and, and Melissa Toner, um, and a little bit about Melissa if you don't know Melissa's background. Been at MPS since 2004. What you may not know is Melissa was an accountant, I think, prior to MPS. Did I get that right? Yeah. Yes, yes, you did. Okay. Um, <laughs> She has been a Beetle, a building technology director in our uh, district, so she fits this new role very well. She has a bachelor's from Saginaw Valley State, a master's from Grand Canyon University. Her new title of her position is Media Instructional Technology oh, Specialist. Excellent. So slightly changed from the position we had before as title um, with our new focus of where we're going. Um, certainly with Central Park kicking off. Um, she'll be spending some time over there. Very good. Well, I just want to say thank you uh, for this opportunity. I am really excited and looking forward to supporting staff and students um, with technology needs, instructional technology, and whatever support they need in that way. And it is an exciting time because, I mean, there are so many things happening with the one-to-one -one devices and um, PYP and just STEM and all of the other great things that we're doing in the district. So I am excited. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And most of you know uh, Margaret by now, because you've seen her a few times, but it, it, we need to mention her. So Margaret served as uh, interim principal at Plymouth this year, and she will assume that position going forward. And a little bit you may or may not know about Margaret, she is a Midland High graduate, so that fits right in with Midland High back there tonight. <laughs> and she holds a bachelor's degree from MSU in education and a Spanish and master's from Saginaw, special ed in Saginaw Valley. Do I have that right? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> okay, that and she joined FPS in 2004 as an elementary Spanish teacher in 13 years. She has been 13 years with us and she has taught in six MPS schools, so she's wow. ready for this position as well. Right. You'll notice that's a theme today, this well-rounded background mm -hmm. of our people tonight. Um, in July of 2006, she was appointed to Plymouth Elementary School. Sure. Yeah, and like everyone else, I just want to say thank you to you guys. Um, I was very excited when given the opportunity to be interim, but I was nervous. Um, I'm looking forward to my second year kind of doing this. Um, and I just want to say that kudos to MPS for doing the mentor program they did with me, having Bridget Hockemeyer be my mentor. I don't think I could have done it without her. <laughs> I don't think I could have done it without the help of all the other principals. Um, so just a really great MPS family helped me to be where I am today, and I'm very excited. I'm excited to start the new year with uh, the building a little more settled than it was. <laughs> and I'm just very happy to have this opportunity. So thank you, guys. I appreciate yeah, you. Thank you. I bet you'll enjoy that big gymnasium cafeteria, too. Yes, I, I will. And actually, just while we're talking about it, um, we're planning on doing our, our fall festival. It'll actually look like a winter festival kind of carnival night when that opens instead oh, of when we nice. typically do it in the fall. So you, of course, you're all welcome. All right. Everybody okay. loves a good bounce house. Congratulations. Okay, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So a little bit of blend of uh, in-house personnel plus some coming from the outside. And the last one I'll introduce has got a blend of both, right, at this point. And, and that mentorship program um, did work well. And we're going to, I wrote to you Friday that we're going to try to, uh, to continue that again. And I'll speak a little bit at the close of the meeting about that tonight. Um, and the last one you know very well, so Janet uh, Greif um, returning. And her background, you know, being at NPS is a plus. Plus, now she's gained superintendent experience. Mm -hmm. and it's, yes, as I'm telling you, that's <laughs> like the, the big one, right? And so having a couple years under her belt there as well is going to assist her uh, in moving forward. She has been an administrator 
um, in our district at every um, yeah. level as well. And that's going to be a plus serving us coming forward. And she started her, her career as a building administrator in Bay City, so hence she was there. And she has her bachelor's and master's from Saginaw Valley State University. And you know, Janet, she really struggled tonight. Mike, are you sure the board's going to be OK? I'm not here, not there. I said, Janet, I would expect you to do nothing else but to be at your last board mm -hmm. meeting, right. leading the school district that you're um, paid to be leading. So Absolutely. that's where she is tonight. Yes. Well, I've already had lots of comments from people who are very excited that she's coming back. And then um, this also goes into what you were alluding to before that a few years ago when Gary did retire, there was a lot of nervousness on the board when we were, you know, reducing at this level yeah. an administrator and, you know, just the workload and everything. And so I'm very happy that we're able to add. Um, Gary's, well, it's not Gary's specific position, no, but bringing it back to the yeah. level that um, we were at yeah. three years ago, probably now. Yeah, same level of manpower, but mm -hmm. um, associate versus assistant. Right, right. Certainly the duties have divided, as Brad mentioned, that matrix a little bit different as we've mm -hmm. gone forward to our skill sets, to the skill set mm -hmm. of people that we have here. All right, well, at this time, I'll take a motion to approve the administrative appointments. So moved. Support. Moved by Scott, supported by Lynn. <laughs> Is there any additional discussion at this time? I'm just very excited with uh, everyone we talked about. Looks like a great group, cast of characters. <laughs> cast of characters. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. All right, congratulations to all of you. And thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Austin Roger. <laughs> All right, moving into item 4.2, which is the salary letter for employee groups. They may want to stick around for this. Yeah, they, they, they already know it. <laughs> they, they already know the stuff. So like annually, um, we present a salary letter to you. Um, it's way before me in, in the tradition of how we present. And I think really, when I came here and looked at the salary letter, so that's different, but you have you know such a diversity of employee groups. I think someone had good thinking when they came up with the salary letter. So it's all there in detail for you in history. So I won't go too far in it, but a couple of things I do want to point out is um, we have 14 groups of employees. So that kind of gives you a sense of why we need this. Um, at this point, we have contracts in place with the Michigan Federation of Paraprofessionals through June of 18, Midland City Education Association through August of 2019 which is the teachers, electronic and le electronic learning facilitators, the Midland City Educational Support Personnel Association, which is our maintenance and grounds employees through September of 2019. So as Bob said earlier, very nice to have all employees settled and moved yeah. through um, with uh, good labor relations, um, which we haven't always been in that position. So it's worked very well at this point in time going forward. Um, other groups of employees that are listed there for you. I won't read them all, but you can see we have many um, from administrative assistants to uh, transportation employees listed for, we, we deal with as well. All got approximately 1% increase in wages, salary and wages, but of course the whole package is more than that because you have benefits and you have each of our contracts are unique from um, did they get concessions back in conferences, did they get concessions back in um, you know, tuition, do they, those different pieces for every employee group. And then we do have some other um, unusual things going on as well um, because of some of our, our employee groups that are near that, that minimum wage group. And so, or, or also maybe hard to recruit at this point. We're going to have to continue to look at that. And teachers, teachers are beginning to fall in that category as well. And so we may have to get creative um, with our association on how we recruit teachers into this area. Um, but we saw 50 cent increases needed for both the bus, bus drivers and workstation support technicians. Bus drivers are a desperate uh, labor group, um, statewide, national wide, anything you read, hard to find. Um, someone might sit around and wait 10, 12 hours to get four or five hours in. You know, they drive in the morning, they'll drive in the afternoon. Um, it's a difficult job that way, and, and so that we needed to raise that, and we did so 50 cents. Um, 
workstation support technicians, their skill levels continue to go up, what they need to be able to do. Um, we lose some of these people to higher skill level jobs, and so trying to retain the ones we have a 50 cent increase there as well. Uh, the preschool assistant that we used um, had to increase due to the, uh, the minimum wage um, portion of that as well. Central Auditorium was with its reopening. Um, we've always had in there something called an auditorium technician, which is kind of limited employee. It's um, Bob will probably describe it better than me, but you know, on a night where we need um, sound help or those type of piece, pieces where the auditorium director is either not available or doing other things, um, this position's in there. And so uh, we, we have updated that position going forward. Minimum wage goes to 9.25 per hour, and we bolded those in the, in the letter for you to know those that were for, required to move up because of that. Um, merit negotiated wages are in there as well and required by law, so you'll see a different range of those uh, merit wages um, being in there. And then of course you deal with me def differently in a separate contract because mm -hmm. it's a totally different employee and it's really being your main or only employee that you, you, you deal with on that sort of portion of it. So. Um, the last thing Bob did mention tonight is the MIPSUS rates. Um, it's all over the board. It is paid down some. There's um, six, seven different plans, Bob. Is that right? No, that's going on from us older folks to the newer folks and different types of plans. And so your rate, um, sometimes we give you an average or, or what we're using the low and the high. And here we got the low and high for you. We pay 20.96% all the way up to 25.56%. It would be like 33, 34 if the state didn't pay that down, just so you know. And then you get the rest of it's got the history, what concessions we're giving, what, what they've gotten back through time. So it's a good letter showing all those pieces. Okay. This time I will take a motion. Approval of the salary letter for employee groups. I move to approve the salary letter for our employee groups. Support. All right, moved by Pam, support by Scott. This time any discussion? All right, seeing no discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, the salary letter is approved. Moving into 4.3, <coughs> which is the Michigan High School Athletic Association. Yeah, so annually you have to make this resolution to join. It is a choice, and that's our, our, our Attorney General has said it's, it's a choice, and so therefore boards annually do that. When you do so, you basically are agreeing to adopt all rules of the Michigan High School Athletic Association going forward. So it's an annual thing. All right. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. Oh, you know what? Let me add, oh. uh, uh, Angela, in the past, you've taken a roll call vote on this. Mm -hmm. As Cindy and I have looked at the Open Meetings Act and some of the things that you have done. This is one I don't think you need to do. It, you know, kind of some of the ones you've done has fallen under what they call um, something major, something okay. large happening. So the tax resolution later on, yeah. it's not required, but I think you should still do it. Some people may see paying taxes as a major thing, <laughs> so that might be a good one. Joining the MH, just to say, I think is something more um, uh, just a standard everyday practice that we need to do. So. All right, well then we will do that. All right, um, at this time I'll entertain a motion for approval of item 4.3. So moved. Do we have to, I think we have to read it. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, so okay. Scott. I'll read it. I move the Board of Education adopt the MHSAA resolution for two Midland Public Schools, I'm sorry, for the two Midland Public Schools, middle schools, and two high schools for the 2017-18 school year. A complete copy of the resolution shall be attached to the original for these minutes. Support. All right. So moved by Scott, supported by Mary. All right, at this time, is there any discussion? No. All right, seeing no discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Moving into item 4.4, .4, which is our Neola Spring 2017 Board Policy Revisions. So twice a year we get those. Annually um, we, we adopt the spring one, and if you call Neola, it's a firm that's multi-state that adopts policies for, I'm going to say, upward to 90% of the school districts in the state of Michigan. Um, Michigan School Board once did that, and they got out, and Neola became the game to go to. Um, and the benefit of having that is, you know, they um, have attorneys on file, you know, so much of it's legal today. 
they're able to vet those policies, write those policies for us. A few options always in them, and so um, I try to go through the options with our consultant. I meet with um, a consultant from the OA, Cindy and I in the room for four or five hours sometimes, and, uh, and go through each of these policies. And then um, recently been our practice is to review those changes with the administrative services, which we did uh, excitingly about a week ago, I think. It was and, good time. Excellent. And so they've been reviewed, vetted, and we're now asking for your approval to adopt them. Well. <laughs> Takes a month or two before they actually show up on the electronic form okay. there, so be aware of that as well. All right. So at this time, I'll entertain a motion. So moved that we approve the policies of Miola. All right. Support. All right. Moved by Lynn. Support by Patrick. Is there any discussion? So did you have any exciting conversations about any of them, or was it kind of? I don't think so. Brad, Brad did a good job of reading them all, but I, nothing big, I would say, huh, Brad? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Nothing out of line with your recommendations or with no. the, the Yeah, no. what we kind of did went through. And a lot of it, so much of it, I hate, and I was explaining to the, the administrators, there's local controls kind of been taken oh, away yes. on a lot of policy. And it used to be, you know, board set policy. You just still do, don't get me wrong. But I mean, it, a lot of it's dictated to you. So. Yes. Some were new and some were updated, so it was just yeah. making a, right. most adapting to today right. and, and making changes where we needed them. Okay, thank you. Yeah, most are revised policies, okay. some language changes, mm -hmm. and a few new. Yep, gone were the days when I got to go to meetings every week when we <laughs> reviewed those before you came. We <laughs> talked about that. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness for you all. Yeah. You all missed out on a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> all right, any other comments? Thank you all on the administrative for going through all those. Well, really, the city and Mike were putting in the long hours. Yeah. We just got the executive summaries, and they did the real hard work. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. This will be updated. All right. Moving into item 4.5, which is approval of the summer tax rate. Bob, to you. Yeah. This is, uh, you more like you feel like you do this many times during the year, but remember, like in November, we'll ask you to give me a resolution that tells the city we're going to do tax collections twice. This one is to tell them how much, and they're waiting patiently for this one. I direct you, if you're looking at it, to the second page. Everything on the first page is pretty standard language there. When you get the second page, really what's going on there, the first part, uh, we're asking on the hold harmless millage to, uh, uh, excuse me, on the not homestead millage for nine mills, just splits at 18 and a half. Uh, on the hold harmless, we're asking for 0.9, which means we'll follow up with the 0.81 on the second one. And uh, three on the commercial personal property, again, that's part of the six, so that's just split in half. And of course, 1.36 on the bond, which splits the 272. It's only in the city, on city property, it's not in the county. The city's doing that, so we send them the resolution and they levy those taxes for us. All right, now this is another one that Whoever would I'll like read. to make a motion. I'll read it. All right. Okay. I move to approve the resolution certifying the tax rate that is to be levied in the summer of 2017 on the property of the school district within the city of Midland. A complete copy of the resolution shall be attached to the original of these minutes. All right. Support. All right. Moved by Scott. Support by Pam. Is there any discussion at this time? All right, seeing no discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, moving into 4.6, which is the superintendent contract renewal. Oh, it was. Yeah. I I'm I sorry. I you can do it either one way, but I would suggest you continue with that practice. See, you threw one. me for a loop after the last I one. did. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. So, all right, we are ready for a roll call okay. vote. President Brant said. Yes. Vice President Singer. Yes. Treasurer Fizzi. Yes. Member Baker. Yes. Member Blazy. Yes. Member Cadell. Yes. And I'm also yes. So. All right. Excellent. Thank you very much for catching that. All right. Moving into 4.6, which is superintendent contract renewal. And I know I had the opportunity to talk to all of you um, right along with um, the rest of our employee groups, um, Mike's contract is separate from everybody else's, and so this time of the year, we always look to um, renew it. We established it when he came here um, four years ago, and um, 
since that time, I think you have made, you know, some concessions like the other groups. And so in that same, um, along with that same this time, and I had discussed with all of you, we are looking to make just a couple changes to what is in there. Um, keep most of the language. We are going to first off add an additional year onto the contract, which will, it's just rolling over, we'll keep it as a five-year contract as it is right now. So it will run from July 1st, 2017 to June 30th, 2022. Um, like most all other employee groups, we will um, increase your annual salary by 1%. And um, you will maintain the concessions um, that you have up to this point. You are will forego the expected budget surplus stipend, and um, we will establish an annuity payment equal to 4.5 percent of your base salary, which is in line with um, most other superintendents' contracts. So, in keeping um, with that, and that um, really is taking that expected budget surplus and the concessions that you have that really have been sunsetted out of most other contracts and instead putting it into this um, annuity payment. So those are the proposed changes to the um, contract. So at this time, I would entertain a motion. I motion to approve the, con uh, the contract as run. Support. All right. Moved by Pam, support by Scott. This time, do we have any discussion? I, I think um, Mike came in low as far as um, how he was compensated. And I guess we owe Angela and Jerry a big thank you for bringing in, giving us such a good deal. But um, <laughs> I think it's, it's time and it okay. gets, I feel really good about um, offering this up. And uh, when Mike came in, he asked for nothing. And, um, and normally a vehicle was provided to our superintendent and he didn't want a vehicle. Um, I, w I also reviewed over 24 different superintendents in the state at, at, uh, school, at districts that are around the same size with around the same test scores as we had and our superintendent salary fell to the bottom. Not all the way to the bottom, but close. Mm -hmm. and for me, that that meant that we needed to, to make some changes, and I think this was much needed, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm I'm glad we're doing that. So, and uh, adding another year to the contract and keeping them around to 2022 is great <laughs> because my son graduates in 2021. So we got a blue stadium. Someday I'll graduate. I'll <laughs> yes, and I should have said that we did collect. Um, Bob did a lot of data collection for me so we could really look at um, you know, what is out there. And like I think I had said to all of you, really, for a superintendent, the peer group is other superintendents. Um, it's not you know, anyone else in our school district. So that's really who we need to use when we benchmark um, the contract that we do um, offer to you. Are there any other comments, questions? At this time, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Um, Thanks, congratulations. Thank you. And I was thank making you, a comment this weekend. I was back in my hometown uh, supporting an alumni in a golf outing, and they asked me about um, Midland and the board. And I said, you know, I've worked for great boards. I've worked, and your board's changed here. And I was telling them, I work for a great board. It makes you understand, since I've been there, um, how many faces here? Three, four. I think so a lot. You know, and again, it continues to be a great board. Seriously, great board. Great community to work for. Mm -hmm. Guys, I, I didn't know how smart I was by taking the job. <laughs> um, um, but I do also uh, just want to add. You know, when we came in, and that was uh, Angela and Jerry. You know, did did look at the, where Carl was, and we did and did take less because it was partly where the finances where we are. So appreciate the increase, but. Uh, and we got to be reasonable and keep in line with all the employees. This is very much aligned the same yes. with all the other employees. So. Very good. Okay. okay, moving on to item five, which is request to address the board. Roger. <laughs> 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 
All right, I think we'll, we will move on to um, item six, which is administrative services. And it looks like there was a meeting. So Lynn, we did. you would read the. We met on June 7th and uh, Brad and Scott, Mike, Cindy and myself were there. And uh, we met on <coughs> at the meeting tonight. Mr. Sherrill will bring for action to the Board of Education policy changes to a number of Midland Public Schools policies as recommended by NEOLA in our spring 2017 updates. NEOLA retains law firms to provide legal reviews of published materials and cons consults on policy updates in the spring and fall each year. Therefore, the legal accuracy and compliance of proposed revisions can be unequivocally guaranteed. Mr. Shero and the Administrative Services Committee members discussed these policies that have proposed changes and, and they are listed in, uh, in our minutes. The policies that will be presented uh, tonight will be included in the documentation for board members to review before the meeting. So if anybody has any questions or wants to go back and review those, they are available. And we will meet when we are needed again. All right, thank you very much. Moving into item seven, which is curriculum <coughs> instruction and assessment, 7.1. Pam? Uh, yes, I have meeting minutes. On Monday, May 15th, we met at the Building Trades ho um, home. Scott Cochran, Kevin Dodick, and Bill Brown were our guest presenters. And uh, the Building Trades uh, house tour uh, was led by Kevin Dodick, the Building Trades teacher, Bill Brown, City Building City of Midland Building Department Liaison and Scott Cochran, Auxiliary Education Curriculum Specialist. And they discussed the overall Building Trades project and partnership for the 2016-17 school year. This year's partnership included the City of Midland and the Reese Endeavor. The duplex is fully compliant with Americans with Disability Act requirements, being fully handicap accessible, barrier free, and include zero step construction. In the final weeks of the school year, students will be putting the final touches on the interior and exterior of the home and property. You know, whenever I walk into one of these homes and they have that zero step construction, I, I am so excited about how they do that, all the planning that has to go into that, but everywhere you go, you can just roll right in and uh, it's, it's a really neat design. That's all I have. All right, 7.2, district school improvement plans. Yep, and this really is the notice to you all that the district and school improvement plans have been completed and that they are available for review in my office. <coughs> we don't officially attach them to your minutes because it might break the internet. The size <laughs> of, of what these documents are, much like the budgeting process, the drafting of these plans is, is quite a complex venture. We actually start in the late winter and early spring in drafting these. Building teams collaborate down here. Um, in three separate sessions to build their improvement plans. And as a district, we also collaborate as well with each of the four core subject areas over a period of many months. In addition, the district and school improvement plan both get vetted through our DSIC committee, district school improvement committee, and those meetings have concluded as well. So those are ready and available for review for anyone that would like to see them. And we'll ask that you move on these to officially approve them at um, the July 14th. Right. And we always have a board member, and Brad, this year you served on that. Thank you very much. <coughs> Appreciate it. All right, moving into 7.3. And tonight for 7.3, we bring forward three adoptions. Um, we have an IBAP biology text, an IBSL organic and environmental chemistry text, and also a geometry text that will be used for three different classes, geometry point two and integrated math one and two. And those texts have all been vetted by our internal committees. That paperwork is on file as well as the actual physical text as well. They're available outside of my office. And so those are also now being brought for informational purposes. We'll ask for you guys to move um, for action on those items at the July board meeting. And we will only purchase those if there are available funds within the 17-18 adopted budget. All right. Can let Sarah Branstadt get a head start, I guess. And I <coughs> All right, moving into item eight, FFO, Patrick. Yep, we met June 5th, um, had two main topics of discussion, the bond update and finances for the district. For the bond update, 
Mr. Dombrow, Barton Mallow reviewed and discussed with the committee the work completed at various sites across the district to date in the scheduled summer work. Mr. Jerome of French Associates made the committee aware of changes in the building code which might affect future bond projects. Mm -hmm. That was a surprise. Number two, the finance. We've already discussed most of this tonight and approved maybe all of it here. Uh, we discussed with Mr. Cooper and Mrs. Holderby April financial reports, upcoming summer tax resolution and millage rates, 1718 proposed budget, 1718 employee salary letter, and then the superintendent's compensation package. We have the next meeting set for Monday, July 10th at 5 o'clock. Right. Thank you very much. Moving into 8.2, Bob. Yes, I think I've counted 24 gifts yeah. tonight. $40,772.87. Information only, but you'll notice um, there's a, some from a couple of uh, parents to different uh, organizations there, from individuals. Uh, the Detroit Pistons basketball one is through um, Larry Jacobs, who had gotten that, and so he could bring back a, a grant to, to uh, somebody in the district that he thought was worthwhile. He works with the drama. Uh, you'll notice the Jefferson Parent Advisory Committee, the uh, sports boosters, both at Dow High and Middle High, very active uh, in bringing forth things. And uh, like always, the uh, Midland Community um, Foundation, we have a couple that people apply through through the Youth uh, Action Council and then the community gives where our sports teams uh, perform community service and get uh, money back through that through Dow Chemical and the uh, uh, Area Community Foundation. So that's for information. Like always, appreciative. And at the end of this meeting, of course, that whole list will run there. Um, do have something for action under 8.3. Uh, because of the size of the gifts, if you remember, the board needs to take mm -hmm. action on these. Um, these are both from the uh, Middle High Athletic Boosters Club. Um, there is one for, uh, together it's $18,597. There's one for roughly $12,000 for a softball scoreboard. And the other is uh, six, uh, 6500 for a discus cage. And that requires your board approval tonight. All right. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to approve item 8.3. I move that we approve the uh, gifts uh, under 8.3. Support. Moved by Scott, support by Pam. Is there any discussion? Wow. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, Mary. <laughs> wow. Kind of take my breath away. Yeah, it's amazing. Yes. Wonderful support. And really, you think that um, the booster club support is a lot of it. It's parents coming together. It's the booster bash that year after year, parents come together and. Um, <laughs> There are a lot of planning put on this great event for both schools together, and I think this, especially this month, really displays um, how many different things it touches. You know, all the sports, I, you know, so many different sports are beneficiaries of all this. So appreciative to everybody who works so hard to help fund all this. All right, any other comments? I was just going to say, I even noticed just it goes across the curriculum. Yes. You know, looking at mixers and, you know, literature supplies, science units, sports. So often there's things for music programs. And, and so it just covers a whole gamut. And we're so grateful because without those generous gifts, we would not be able to do all that we do. Yes. Definitely. I had to do a double take on what mixers were. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. All right, 8.3 passes, and thank you once again. Moving into 8.4. Still have a little bit more for information. These are gifts, but they're actually gifts of items. Mm -hmm. um, if you've been to Central Park Elementary, you know they have a live wall right inside the gateway. And the plants, uh, which are, have approximate value of $1,500, are being donated by French Associates, our architect, who very pleased with the building they've designed. They're getting a lot of kudos for it and would like to give something back to us. Just, uh, so it's very nice that they would do that. And the other one is from uh, Jennifer Suarez, who is, uh, and her husband, uh, but she's a t teacher for us. And they're donating three bookcases uh, for Northeast. And you can see there's a practical value there, 550. Doesn't require uh, any board action, but it's just items which we get from time to time. So we're just listing them separately. All right. Who was thinking? Who's going to be the gardener? <laughs> That's what I wonder. Bridget or? 
I think if Brian told me correctly, and I think I was there too, so the first go around they're going to plant the there's color in it too. Yeah, it's going to form a seed. So they're going to put a C in when they put. I think it could change after that, but when it starts, it's going to have green mm. with the. Wow. Nice. Cool. I am excited to see that for the Who's amateur gardener that I am. Yeah. Maybe they could take on watering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> could be. <laughs> All right. Moving into item nine, human resources. We have a uh, staff member that announced retirement that we have taken uh, have taken to you before, Linda McDonald, a uh, special education teacher in the special services department. And it will be at the end of the school year. All right. Well, thank you very much for her years of service to the district. All right, item 10 is correspondence to and from the Board of Education. Those are all listed. Item 11 is our scheduled activities for the rest of the year. Please note, we do have a second board meeting um, in June, and that will be <laughs> June 26th. And that's where, as we stated before, we will approve next year's budget and approve our final budget um, from this year. At this time, we'll move into study discussion section where session where we hear from board members. And so, Brad, I'll start with you tonight. Okay. Um, as we talked about, we went through all the NEOLA policies and the bylaws for the Board of Education. Um, in the packet of the bylaws, under the agenda item, which is 0166, it says the agenda for each regular meeting shall be mailed or delivered to each board so as to provide proper time for the member to study the agenda. Generally, the agenda will be delivered so as to provide time for the study of the agenda by the member. I'm not making a motion. I'd like to put something out there for discussion that we could move forward and talk about this. Could be possibly something that we can derive for our next meeting or a following meeting, is that these packets have grown in size and there's a lot of documentation in there. And I would like to throw out my idea when I had talked to Angela about mm -hmm. it was adjusting other time frames when we have our committee meetings and or our financial documents are available. My dream would be to have four business days. Now, if we can't achieve the four business days, I understand that, but that's what my request is, is we can have four business days from the delivery of the packet until we have our meeting on Monday night to give us proper time, whether we have obligations on weekends, whatever else is going on, I would like to have a little bit more time to process this information and to improve my participation as a board member as well as other people at this table. That when we have a 213 page document, it's a lot to go through it all. Granted, 90 pages of it were NEOLA and, and some of the policy things that you don't really have to take serious action on, but I would like to put it out there for future discussion and or if we plan it into our upcoming calendar. So that is a request of mine. All right, and that's what I thought by putting it out tonight, we could really, people can think through because there's, you know, pluses Perf and minuses on both sides. Four business days. I said, I had that as Tuesday. Four days um, would be Thursday. And um, if you check MASB or mm -hmm. schools across the state, there's no one that can meet the, t the Tuesday. Um, a Thursday should could be a very reasonable goal um, to do for sure as you think going forward. Or um, financials, for example, for the district, you're going to be proving them so late would be a major one. Um, the, the putting the, the, the book together, you know, go back to when you had two board meetings. That's mm -hmm. all Cindy did. Right, right, you know, right. And she, she would be backing her time up as well um, into that piece as well on, on there. She's so dependent on business department and HR department and them to get some of the documents. That's usually the delay. Um, I, I certainly think we can make a Thursday um, goal to hit that would be work. That's just from coming from my side. So, mm -hmm. oh, you know, I didn't know when you said four business days, I'd say Tuesday in my head and, or if it's four days. I was thinking four business days, which would be close of business on Tuesday, so we'd have something at the end of Tuesday or waiting for us Monday or a Wednesday morning, something like that. So we have the four Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday. So I think we just need to understand what goes into it, which yep. is why when you emailed, I thought great discussion to have so that we all have a good understanding of 
you know, what goes into it and all the different groups that are providing information and where the, um, you know, deadlines are and what mm -hmm. drives those. So yep. I completely understand yeah. that. Yep. And I, I think that in order to have more time to spend with this and to be able to formulate questions and have a timely manner to get some questions answered that uh, I would like to have more time with the packet. And I think that it could benefit all of us. So I think can we just, we'll, we'll look into that a little more and put together something. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Did you have other things? No, ma'am. Okay. Moving on to Lynn. Alrighty. I just wanted to comment on uh, the fact that there was another IB, fifth grade IB PYP exhibition. I'm sorry I couldn't get over to Adams tonight, but I've, be I've been to the one before. And just to comment that these uh, exhibitions and uh, activities that these young people are doing are just absolutely amazing. Far different than the projects I did when I was a fifth grader. So I'm excited in the, as we move forward to be able to see more of the, the kind of things the kiddos are doing. And as we talk about elementary school, um, I was able to get over to East Lawn and Carpenter for their, their school celebrations as mm -hmm. they are celebrating all the years of, of being eagles and the crusaders, I believe. And uh, that was a fun, a fun afternoon and to see so many people there, uh, that alumni even that came, it was really fun from alumni teachers to students. Uh, I know at East Lawn, they thought the furthest person had come from Wisconsin, and somebody hollered out and said, no, I'm from California. So um, wow. it, was, it was fun. It was fun to see what they were doing. And then as far as um, thinking about their new school was a Central Park Elementary. I just thought it was so exciting to see the kiddos here. And I, I love the song and the logo and just the excitement that's going with that. And so, Cindy, yeah, I'll definitely want to know when they're going over. I want to see the looks on their faces mm -hmm. now when they go into the building. Um, congratulations to our Shining Stars, Dave and Lynn. Once again, I just I just love the, the variety of, of people that we honor and all the, the great things that they do. And I'm so excited to have Janet back. And mm -hmm. welcome to Matt. And congratulations to Melissa and Margaret. It's just kind of fun to have all this new energy coming in. Um, at the administrative level. And I guess the last thing I'd say is good luck on exams, ki kids, t the next three days. I hope it's not too hot, but on Friday, summer begins and lots of fun activities. And mm -hmm. I know school, school here doesn't end and there'll be lots of things going on in the building. So and, uh, enjoy your last few days of school and picnics and parties, those that aren't doing it, having exams, and enjoy your summer. Very good. Um, after talking tonight, I'm very excited about uh, the expansion of middle school electives, maybe possibly something project lead the way um, for middle school. And um, just looking, looking at uh, the numbers and the budget and, and hopeful for some of that at-risk money and, and hopeful uh, for opportunities anyway to make little little changes that might impact um, these kids is great. So that's um, what I look forward to. The other thing that, that was interesting to me was the new building requirements for our, um, our building process and how that's gonna impact Chestnut Hill and and Seabert, and I'll be interested to see the, n the new design for that building that with the new code has to withstand 250 mile an hour winds, so. Well, I think they're still checking on where we fall in that though, right? Well, the additions, yeah. The yeah. scene of that falls the law's right. law, but there's additions, but, but yeah. it, Dale wasn't real hopeful. Right. That, so. I don't think we've ever had 250 mile an hour winds in Midland, Michigan, but uh, <laughs> that'll be the safest building around, right? Um, Big Maybe congratulations. Costly. Go ahead. <laughs> Maybe cost this too. Very, right, yeah, right. That's the apprehension. Um, congratulations to Janet Greif and, and Matt Wenzel. I'm, I'm super excited to have them join our team. And um, thank Bay City for sending us some of their best. Um, and just wonderful gifts that were given that Bob went through tonight. Uh, such generosity is certainly appreciated. Scott. Uh, a lot of my things are checked off. Uh, all I have left to, 
talk about a, really just a request from three of my children uh, to give public shout outs to their teachers uh, for what they describe as a magical year. Awesome. Uh, to Miss Andrews, uh, Ms. Ramacklin, and Ms. Jolly, thank you on behalf of uh, Sebastian, <coughs> Connor, and Cameron. Uh, they really enjoyed it and they're just loving life. Uh, two of them at Seabird and uh, Cameron's really excited to, to join her brothers. So that's all I have. Cool. All right, not much new by me that hasn't been said already. Um, although I am grateful after sitting through commencement with the high, was it last week already, two weeks ago? Of course, it's hot and cold all spring, and then it's hot that day. Um, next year should will be wonderful. I had heard a few comments of people passing by about next year it's going to be this, and yeah. walk outside afterwards if it's 65 and beautiful. So yeah. looking forward to that. Um, I think it's always hot. doesn't matter those days. It's always hot. Um, <laughs> Then it's been said, but just the, the you know the, the fun balance and where things are going and you know, to go up almost three percent of an eighty million dollar budget is no small change. So appreciate the work and diligence. That is it for me. Thank you, Mary. Um, I don't have a whole lot more that hasn't already been said. You guys took it really well. Um, I just wanted to say that it was really. Um, awesome for me to be able to be at Dow High graduation and, and see the graduates going through from a different perspective. Being a, um, as a school board member, I was really honored um, and shaking their hands. It was really extraordinary. Great, thanks. Let's see, I have, well, in the last week, I was able to sign the uh, paperwork for Carpenter and Eastlawn for IB. Oh. And um, I believe that those then will transfer into Central correct. Park and they will automatically be, am I correct in that statement? Correct. Few yeah. few documents or something on there. Formality we have to fill out. Okay, yes. okay, yes. excellent. So that, that was very exciting. Um, I know just in some communications, a little overwhelming, all the bond work that's going to go on this summer that um, I'm assuming a lot of it come Friday, it's going to be bam. Yeah. <laughs> you know? For a long time we had two, two, three Barton Mallow folks that Worked here in NPS, you know, uh -huh. five or six. We almost need a name list now. We're starting to see. Right, I was basically. thinking we're finishing up Central Park, finishing up the auditorium, Woodcrest and Plymouth, secure entrances in all buildings. We have new buses coming, new technology. So once again, thank you, thank you to the community who's supporting all of this through um, their property tax dollars. So uh -huh. it's been very exciting this summer to see a lot of changes in all schools. Um, let's see, final exams I know are coming up um, and elementary school parties. Sadly, we're past the party point at our house and we're <laughs> to the final exam <laughs> stages. So not quite as fun of a week at our house as uh, at Scott's house. <laughs> so, um, congrats to all of the 2017 graduates, like Mary said, just such a, um, such a highlight, I think, for all of us um, as board members to be able to attend graduation and really honor all the graduates for everything they've, you know, all the hard work they've put in for 13 years and um, just a, you know, great experience, great speakers. Um, I was at Dow High and just, um, I'm always amazed at how well the kids speak and the, um, teacher was outstanding at Dow High who spoke this year too and um, just a wonderful evening and um, it, it was hot at Dow High too for all of you that were at Midland High. <laughs> I had a friend who was sitting up in the upper level who told me how hot it was. Um, and then finally just um, as Mike completes his fourth year leading our district, um, I'm just really happy tonight that we're able to renew your contract. Um, as we all collectively work to uh, support all the children in our community. Yep. So thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll turn it over to you. Well, one last thing I'd mention on East Long Carpenter, um, quite a task when you think about two um, buildings of uh, high socioeconomic need. And so what a great task that, to get that authorization. Mm -hmm. And um, they're going into a school where they're going to mix STEM and IBPYP going forward. So, and that, and as far as we can tell, there's we're not sure anyone's out there doing that mix. So it's gonna be kind of neat and kind of fun to do as well. 
uh, wrote to you about Chromebooks for staff. So you uh, staffs are get, turning in their iPads and getting those. And by the way, you need to do the so same in the next few weeks. Dave will probably be calling yours in to get ready for the Chromebook. Um, he, he assures me, he showed Cindy, I think, that board book works well on there. So um, uh, going forward, but a little different tool. So I'm sure not techie, we may need some help. And there's plenty of tutoring that Dave has for you uh, online as well. Um, Administrative mentoring, I mentioned that earlier. Mm -hmm. And so our hope is to work out that agreement with the MCA. Um, it would still be a teaching position like Margaret was this year. We used almost the same pattern. Um, there's some guarantees and pieces that they needed and we didn't use Margaret for evaluation. Um, so one thing she didn't do as administrator is that teachers can vote evaluate. So that's a big piece for them. A few other pieces of it, but uh, the initial discussion with Mark, with Mark was he, he was open to it and he would take it to his governing board. Okay. And so I'm trying to finish up well, what's called a letter of understanding to get there as well. Um, not only to build our own talent pool, but I'll make no bones about it. Today I met Susan Johnson over at Seabird. I thought, wow, you know, um, 600 students by yourself is a task. Um, that 600's come to 610, 615. If you see um, that we have several special education groups in that building, okay. um, we need manpower. It was probably something that I had put in my, my back of my mind that I thought about doing with Margaret. If she hadn't become a principal, maybe shifting. And so this mentoring program like is the perfect mix. We mm -hmm. get some assistance and it'll start with Seabrook. It could be in other buildings as things occur or go on um, and, and we're exposing somebody to it, they can decide if they like this mm -hmm. part of education or they don't after a couple of years. And even after one, they could opt out, I suppose, and we go to another one, and we get the chance to see mm -hmm. if we like the performance as well. So I think it's a plus plus going forward. Um, bond work, lots going on. I wrote to you about all those pieces of it. As I said, Bart Mellis had to add staff and getting ready to go for this build up. So a, a big push to the fall. Um, there's a lot of stress going on about teachers moving out of those classrooms <coughs> right now. So you may have to uh, um, do some counseling if you can uh, on some of that. I think I saw up. a huge dumpster at Carpenter, didn't I, Car when I drove by Dumpsters at all the buildings, yeah. too, and we've encouraged them for a long time to, yeah. to do so, so going forward. Um, positive budget information. Um, still say we have, you know, I, I use 13 to 15 percent, I think, when we were talking, but in Mike's world, I'd like 15 to 17 percent, but I figure some people would debate with me if that's excessive. I really do think 15 to 17 percent is where school districts should be. Um, fluctuating, you know, back and forth as you need that to go forward. And so we're heading in a good trend. Um, you know, it's really a mix out there on state economic news. You need to watch that because, you know, it obviously f feels like the squared budget. You know, you hear at one moment some indicators indicating things are picking up, but there's some scary things in there at times to, to wonder about what's going to happen as well in our state. And so, um, hence the reason cautious slow growth as right. we go forward not not too fast as we go forward yeah i watch a lot of automotive trends in my <laughs> line of work so yeah. yeah and i do too i use yeah. the automotive mm -hmm. still because we're so automotive dri right. driven and so i f i've always have followed that you know i i tease and bob's heard me say on this that in 2007 when i started telling everybody we needed to cut i had 20 percent two percent fund balance mm -hmm. and all of the other superintendents going what are you looking at what why would you think that so I think I was ahead of the trend because um, but it was economic automotive data that was scaring the heck out of me about where we were heading and so I think that is a great indicator yeah. going forward even though we're a chemical town here speaking of chemical town Dow products used at Central Park Elementary School so we emphasize that we hope to get some savings um, so what we were told is you know you don't get straight discounts but Dow would certainly um, at, tell key vendors um, if they specified that product that they might sell to those key uh, tradesmen or vendors mm -hmm. cheaper. We don't know that how that worked out, but we worked on it. But you know, in this town, it was important to have right. Dow pro products, and I think you have a list of twelve there that we we used of their products in there. Well, there's a few other Dupont ones because Dow didn't make them, but they're in there as well. <laughs> so. That's all I have. All right, thank you. Right, is there anything else? Not, thank you everybody and with that we will end during the board meeting.